at 11. Meet the rescuers who saved the dog known as the unicorn puppy. I smile every time I see him. A Portland chocolate shop owner makes changes after facing backlash over the store's name. This thing offended a lot of people in the community, and that's all I need to know. A shocker from the Blazers. Reaction tonight to reports Carmelo Anthony is joining the team. Plus, another porch pirate is caught on camera. But see how one local law enforcement agency is working to protect your packages ahead of the holiday season. And we start tonight with the latest in yet another school shooting. Two students were killed, four others hurt in Santa Clarita, California this morning. Authorities say a student who turned 16 today shot five classmates then himself. The whole thing took just 16 seconds. We don't know yet if the student targeted the victims. He survived the self-inflicted gunshot, but is in critical condition tonight. The FBI says there's no reason to believe he was acting on behalf of a group or ideology. Investigators are searching his digital footprint for signs of a motive. The students and teachers tonight are struggling to believe they were at the center of this latest act of violence. I will never forget the looks on the kids' faces when they were running out and they were looking behind them, fearing for their lives. I couldn't believe something like this would happen at our school. I held a bleeding child today in my classroom. I don't think there's any sort of training that can prepare you for this. A 14-year-old boy and 16-year-old girl were killed. So far, they're not being identified. New at 11 tonight, ICE agents will have to stay away from Oregon courthouses unless they have a warrant. That's the ruling today from the Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court. The ruling prohibits any civil immigration arrest inside or on the public walkways or parking areas surrounding courthouses unless the agents have a warrant signed by a judge. The ACLU says videos like this demonstrate the sometimes forceful arrests being made by ICE agents at local courthouses. These are arrests that are done often by plainclothes agents who are not identifying themselves. They're not producing a warrant even when they're asked. They've shoved people's defense attorneys in the process of making these arrests. Um, and they've targeted even U.S. citizens based on their appearance. As a result, the ACLU says many people are afraid to come to court to take care of something as simple as a parking ticket. We ask ICE for reaction to the ruling. A spokesperson said in part, it is ironic that elected officials want to see policies in place to keep ICE out of courthouses while caring little for laws enacted by Congress to keep criminal aliens out of our country. Despite attempts to prevent ICE officers from doing their jobs, ICE will continue to carry out its mission to uphold public safety and enforce immigration law. Caught on camera, a suspected porch pirate in action, stealing a package right off the front porch of a Vancouver home. It's something that's becoming all too common. But as Mike Benner reports, a local sheriff's department is working hard to make these thieves think twice. Got one camera up in there inside the window. You can kind of see the green light. There's another one in that window there. Most of the time, Greg Martsoff's home security cameras are more of a scare tactic than actual need. Thursday morning, though, they captured something that can only be described as maddening. It's a shame that, you know, you got to put up cameras and, you know, you got to deal with this kind of stuff. Just before 11 o'clock in the morning, the camera trained on the front porch recorded a porch pirate in action. Watch as a red SUV pulls into Greg's driveway on St. Helens Avenue in Vancouver. Somebody wearing a hoodie jumps out of the front passenger seat, grabs a package on Greg's porch, and takes off. And the car was backing out before he even got in it, so there was a second person, obviously, because uh, he, he jumped in the passenger seat. But they're going to be surprised when they open it. All that was in the box, Greg says, 1,000 blank invoices for his company. The shame of it is there's zero value, zero value to anybody else. But that's not always the case, explaining why law enforcement agencies like the Washington County Sheriff's Office utilize what are called bait packages. Packages equipped with GPS are scattered around town. When they're stolen, deputies know right where to go. We do this to try to protect our community members, um, even if it's just something small, um, like a package of diapers that you've ordered. It, you're still a victim, and it's it's you feel violated. That sums up how Greg Martsoff is feeling after watching a stranger steal from him in broad daylight. He's hoping authorities can track down the thief. It's Christmas season coming up. 
and this one is, uh, you know, what they call them, porch pirates, kind of start getting uh, more bolden and, you know, more packages getting delivered. Unfortunately, Greg's cameras did not stop the porch pirate in this case, but there are some other things you can do to be sure that your packages don't end up in the wrong hands. For one, if it's an Amazon package, have it delivered to an Amazon locker, like the ones here. Otherwise, have a neighbor be on the lookout for your delivery or have your delivery scheduled for a time you know you'll be home. Reporting for KGW News, I'm Mike Benner. Now back to you. Switching gears to sports and some big news for the Blazers tonight. It's no secret they're off to a rather slow start this season. They're hoping a future Hall of Famer can give them a spark. ESPN is reporting the Blazers are adding forward Carmelo Anthony. Anthony hasn't played in the NBA since the beginning of last season. The 10 time All Star has reportedly been working out in hopes of returning to the league. The Blazers will be Anthony's fifth team. Sports analyst John Canzano calls it a big swing for the Blazers. Well, the Trailblazers move reeks of desperation, doesn't it? But Carmelo Anthony to the Blazers, this is something we've been waiting to see for a long time. Look, I don't know what he can add on the court. We don't know what kind of player he's going to be. But this is better than the Blazers going out and getting some G League or D League stiff who we know can't play. Carmelo Anthony's been in big games. And the Blazers' mission right now isn't to find consistent rhythm and have Carmelo Anthony lead them. He just needs to be a supplementary piece that can help work like a Band-Aid and get them to the playoffs. That's the mission, right? If you're the Blazers, you started off poorly this season, you still have to be a playoff team where you can get some of those injured players back. So yes, it's a big swing, one that reeks of desperation. I don't know if Carmelo Anthony is going to help the Blazers get over the hump, but certainly the Trailblazers got a whole lot more interesting today. Anthony's expected to join the Blazers sometime during their upcoming road trip that tips off Saturday night in San Antonio. We are hearing a lot of mixed opinions from you on Facebook. Here are a couple of examples. Michael says, I like it. As John Canzano said, we're desperate for offense and Dame needs someone else who can shoot and draw defenders away from him. But Dwayne says, I don't like this move. He's bad for the locker room. Be sure to follow KGW on Facebook to weigh in. We'd love to hear from you. You'll have a chance to vote on this next story in tonight's poll. A new Portland chocolate shop is facing sharp criticism before even opening. At issue is the shop's name and branding. Some say it ignores a strong connection to the slave trade. Catherine Cook talked with the owner who says he's taking those concerns seriously. It's all about the pipes. You wouldn't know it. So right now, yeah, it looks a little bit like Mario Brothers, but... But this space in the Pearl District... Right here is going to be the cacao roaster. ...will soon house Michael Arnovitz's dream. I fell in love with the craft of making chocolate. A fair trade chocolate house. We used to have chocolate houses in this country the way we have coffee houses now. And the first known American chocolate house was created in 1670 in Boston. It's how he came up with the name, 1670 New American Chocolate House. Using that name just connected me to the history of American chocolate. It also created a disconnect. A few days ago, someone altered Arnovitz's window display on Northwest 14th and Gleason. They connected the boats with a timeline illustrating what else happened around 1670. A rise in the transatlantic slave trade, genocide and land theft connected in part to the cacao industry. And I just looked at it and I was like, wow. You know, I was just kind of stunned. Arnovitz says it's not at all what he meant by his name and branding. Still, he took it all down. It's not the community's job to understand what my motivations are or what this has or the meaning this has for me. It's my job to care about the concerns of the community. This thing offended a lot of people in the community. And that's all I need to know. Local artist and activist Molly Alloy claimed responsibility for, as they put it, improving the window display. In an open letter, Alloy also suggested the community should have learned from protests over the now shuttered Saffron Colonial restaurant in North Portland. The owner there faced criticism for the name itself and menu items like Plantation Punch. Moreover, she called the protests over them nonsense. If you make a mistake, I think you just need to own it. For his part, Arnovitz says he'll change the name of his chocolate house. We have to do some rebranding. And he hopes when it opens, the only debate will be what to order. I'm going to turn it around and make a chocolate house they're going to love and that the community can be proud of. 
Arnovitz doesn't know what he'll name his shop now, but is just glad for the opportunity to learn from this and move forward. He says he hasn't connected personally with those behind the protest, but hopes they'll come by when he opens, hopefully in January. And by the way, we invited them to be part of our story tonight as well, but had not heard back from them. We look forward to hearing his new name and we yeah. sure wish him well. I tried the chocolate. It's good. Yeah, I bet you. I bet you it yeah. is. Thank you, Catherine. Well, let us know what you think. Do you agree the owner should change the name of the shop or do you think the criticism goes too far? Click the vote tab on your KGW app or go directly to KGW.com slash vote. We'll reveal the results later in the newscast. And now to a KGW investigation. Thousands of women are finding one of the things that makes them feel normal after cancer could also be making them sick. We're talking about breast implants. Some women report everything from chronic pain to a rare form of cancer after getting the implants. Our Kristen Severance talked to women who said getting their implants removed was their only option. The symptoms were so bad. I woke up one night and I told Randy if this is gonna be my life, I don't want it. I actually said that, I actually said that to him, that if this is gonna be my life, then I don't want it anymore. Then D'Lo started. That was D'Lo Furco who believes she had BII or breast implant illness. After getting her implants removed this past summer, she said she was feeling much better. Check out our full story now on the KGW YouTube page to hear D'Lo's emotional journey to get her body back and see how the FDA is now getting involved to warn women about the risks of these implants. When we come back, devastating news for Marion County. Why a staple in the community is about to lay off 900 workers. And Nike is making a new shoe just for nurses. We talked to the local nurse who helped stress test the design. I'm Matt Safino. We had a good day today. Some sunshine. The clouds have been thickening up along the coast. And in fact, along the coast and offshore, we've got some rain. The morning commute looks wet. I'll talk about the afternoon commute and the weekend after the break. And there are just a few days left before we officially kick off the KGW Great Toy Drive, and we can't wait. But we're still looking for businesses to sign up as collection sites. We'll get you set up with everything you need to help local kids. We do have a big thank you tonight to the Oregon Historical Society for joining our toy drive. You can do it too. It's not too late. Just visit KGW.com toy.